I'm having a look through uh, what some people would call my junk. A lot of it, uh, well not a lot of it, a shed full of uh, my junk as it were has just gone into a skip. Uh, I just closed my eyes, went away, took no interest in it and uh, allowed someone else just to clear the whole lot. And that was things like uh, VCR recorders, uh, old old fashioned video recorders, video players, portable video players and recorders, uh, a few engines and motors, uh, a broken mixing desk, uh, various things like that. Loads of uh, bits of electrical electronic stuff that I just put in the shed. Uh, but mostly it was either really old and obsolete uh, and um, otherwise it was had something wrong with it I, it wasn't functional so it's gone these are fully functional and um, the agonizing bit you're going to hear about in the when I tell you a little bit more about it is whether it's worth hanging on to them or not and my conclusion is yes might as well what I've got here are a pair of matched turntables and these are hardly used, as far as I can tell. Uh, they're in good condition anyway. Um, they're the sort of things that a DJ would have used. But one on its own would make a really nice centrepiece to a hi-fi system where you wanted to play vinyl. Let's have a look at some of the features of it. Uh, between the two turntables, I've only got one slip mat on that one and one of the centers for those 45s but slip mats and centers are relatively easy to come by everything else is there and working so what you have over here is a strobe light and you've got two rows of um, uh, strobe dots there's only just two speeds 33 and 45 uh, and the two sets of dots are depending on whether your mains frequency is 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz how do we adjust the speed? Well, the speed of the turntable is 33 or 45. It's electronic speed control. It's a direct drive turntable. And you can adjust the speed up and down with a slider here. Now, that also means it's possible to give... Um, to speed up a record or slow down a record. don't know why you would want to do that, but with the slip mic, of course, you can also scratch record as it were i .e. slide it backwards and forwards without problems so that's the turntable a heavy platter and there's also a target light that pops up which allows you to place the arm the arm is a clip to keep it in place for when it's been used at the moment uh, it's fairly light but you can adjust the weight of the arm you've got both the weight adjustment at the back and some bias adjustment on it so uh, you can make sure there's no um, tendency to skim off the record uh, and with the arm up you can place it over the track you want using your target light and then you can just lower the arm and it's clearly going to be hydraulically damped to lower it uh, at that position and you can lift it again to make sure you don't scratch the record all the usual things you would expect from a quality bit of kit but here are two of them not much else to say about them except around the back Oops. you've got your mains input you've got your stereo output and a ground by way of phono plugs and you've got a beat output and a remote start stop uh, input uh, so um, you can link it to something else uh, to do remote start stop so that's what you've got and uh, if you do your research you'll be able to find out more about the cam ddx680 direct drive turntable
what stuff do we end up with? Well, these decks are not really worth selling. Uh, I bought them because I wanted to play some vinyl. Well, I only needed one deck, but these were the um, best quality for the money uh, that I could find. Um, now my my wife did buy something with a USB on it uh, to play records through one of those cheap plasticky things. Uh, it's not a patch on this and it cost far more than these cost and that's what people do they buy something that looks the part it's made of plastic it will spin the record but the platter has no weight to it uh, and uh, the tone arm just isn't as well balanced as these tone arms are. So uh, excellent little record decks. If any of my friends want to borrow a record deck to play any uh, old old records on then they're welcome to borrow these. If they want to borrow two record decks to do some DJing on. The only thing is there aren't not modern amplifiers don't have RIAA equalization inputs or phono inputs on them. So really if you want to um, use a record deck like this you need something with a phono input. The a big advantage of the uh, new things you can buy, it's ne nearly said rubbishy things, is that they uh, plug into a USB port or something like that. Uh, and of course for £120 you get it with built-in radio, built-in CD player, built-in cassette player uh, in a plastic box. Now I looked at preamps, RIAA preamps, and uh, what was available. In the end I went into one of these second hand shops and just bought uh, a second hand disco mixer. This is uh, got making of uh, sound lab on it. Uh, the advantage of it, well the one advantage I guess, is if anybody did want to um, use these as a, a disco type thing then you could do it's got the phono inputs it's also got some line inputs so you could feed some auxiliary things in output to the amp output to record if you want to record it uh, a ground output as well and everything's got a ground on it DJ mic and phones inputs on there and a crossfader uh, the crossfader I will tell you does have a little bit of noise on it and so um, if you were or if anybody was wanting to use this professionally you'd have to uh, and it no point taking it back to the shop is there uh, replace the uh, crossfader uh, to get rid of the noisiness of that and yeah you can switch your inputs to whatever other source like a CD source if you want and it does have uh, just bass and treble on it there as well. So that's how I got my RIA equalization preamplifier for these decks. As I say, if they were, if if people would realise how much better they were in terms of quality than the stuff that they're buying in a plastic case, just because of the weight of the platter and the power of the uh, motor then they'd be prepared to pay for it but uh, people aren't at the moment prepared to pay for these and they're not considered audiophile uh, which people do pay uh, Sondek is it a friend of mine's got people pay hundreds for those but only twenties or so for this even for a pair of these but there we are I hardly ever pay, play a record so this is just something I store and keep uh, on the off chance that I might need to do that and um, it's available if anybody wants to borrow it uh, but the, um, the thing is if, if it was worth anything I'd sell it but the hassle you go through on YouTube as you know yourselves uh, is just too great to be worth the effort of advertising it and only getting bids of 20 or 30 pounds for two decks you know 
I'd be kicking myself then if I wanted to play a record. <laughs>